Here's another example of how to use the elimination method to solve simultaneous linear equations. And here are the two equations in question. And so the whole trick is to find a way to subtract or add the two equations so that one of the variables gets eliminated. Well, the first obstacle we're running into here is that they're not in the same format. Here we have the 3y on the right side equation. Here we have the 5y on the left side equation. So first let's move things around so that the x and the y and the numbers all appear on the same side. So we'll take these two equations and we'll rewrite them in this way. x minus 3y equals minus 25. So all I did here is move the 3y to the other side and that became minus 3y. Here I simply keep everything the same. So I have 4x plus 5y equals 19. All right, at least now they're in the same format. But you can see that when I add or subtract these two equations, neither one of the two variables will be eliminated. So, what do I do? Well, you kind of look at it and say, okay, I have a 4x here and I have a 1x there. If this was four times as big, then they would be the same and I could go ahead and get rid of them. And I like to add things so they drop out, so I'm going to multiply the top equation, the left side, by minus 4, and I'm going to multiply the right side by minus 4 as well. Of course, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I have to do exactly the same to the other side of the equation. So what I have in mind is if I multiply this x by minus 4, this will become a minus 4x, and if I then add it to this number, the x's will drop out, and that's exactly what I want. All right, so I'm going to draw the two equations again. The top equation, now multiply by negative 4 on both sides, gives me a minus 4x. A minus 4 times a minus 3 is a plus 12y equals, and a minus 25 times a minus 4 is a plus 100. The second equation, I don't touch, I just leave it alone, so it's 4x plus 5y equals 19. And I'm, go ahead, and I'm ready to go ahead and add the two equations, and as you can see, when I add them together, the x's drop out and end up with a 17y equals 119. Solving this for y, I divide both sides by 17. And it looks like 17 goes to the 119 exactly 7 times, because 7 times 10 is 70, and 7 times 7 is 49, and 70 plus 49 is 119, so that means y equals 7. I can now take that value for y and plug it back into either one of my two equations, and probably the best equation is the top equation because it's already solved in terms of x and y. So plug that in here like so, and then this equation becomes x equals 3 times, instead of y, I write what y is equal to, 7 minus 25, or x is equal to 21 minus 25, or x is equal to minus 4. So now I have the x and the y value, or the x and y coordinates, of the point where the two lines cross. So my solution is minus 4 and 7. And just to make sure I did this correctly, let's plug these two values into the other equation to see if that equation still holds. So I'm going to take the second equation and plug the x and y values in for x and y. So here I get 4 times x is negative 4 plus 5 times y is 7, and that should add up to 19. 4 times the negative 4 is minus 16, 5 times 7 is plus 35, and is that indeed equal to 19? Well, 35 minus 16, yes indeed, 35, so that's the correct solution. So here you can see that the method of, of elimination is not always as straightforward. You get this, you first have to move the equation around so they have the same format, and then you have to multiply one or sometimes both the equations by numbers so that when you add them together, one of the variables will drop out.